All right, 610. Uh-oh, it rubbed off. 610 and 611, 12, and 13. Entropy. And for the worksheet, actually, I want you to do all of the front of the worksheet. There's no math on it. It's more like just reading it. You'll see what I mean. Positive, negative, things like that. It's, it's not hard stuff. And then do number on the back, number 24B and number 26. Now, this is a great example of something that if you were to look in your textbook and you read through those sections I told you about, they, they might not correspond exactly, 6, 11, 12, 6, 10, 6, 11, 12, 13. You're going to see a lot of stuff in there that's like, oh my gosh, what is this? Theoretical, crazy, deriving formulas and all this. Well, I'll touch on them a little bit, but I'll just show you what you really need to know. Okay, so um, 610 just talks about spontaneous processes and entropy. So really, we're mainly going to get here that we'll define it. Entropy. The symbol for entropy is S. Change in entropy is what we care more about. Entropy is a state function, just like... Um, um, enthalpy is, and of course, if I put if I put all right, so that means in, entropy, entropy. I'll tell you what it is in a minute. That means the change in entropy. That means the standard change in entropy. That would mean standard entropy. Okay, and it talks about this is going to be something that that helps us into predicting in the next lesson whether or not a reaction will occur whether or not it, something will occur spontaneously. Spontaneous just means it will occur without any outside intervention. There's already enough, all the ingredients you need are in this room right now. All the chemicals you need are in this container. All the energy you need, everything is there, but it now just has to, it just has to fall into place and the reaction will occur. It's, it's gonna happen. Spontaneous means it's gonna happen. Now, it doesn't always mean it's gonna happen quickly, but it's gonna happen, okay. Um, so, I even wrote that in there. If you wanted to, you could read through the notes. If, uh, you could read spontaneous does not mean it, it has to occur quickly. It just means gonna, it will occur. All right. Um, I'll jump on. I'm not even going to go. Okay. In this, here's what I wanted to show you. Factors that, um, that affect entropy. Now, I have something here also. I have some notes on my own phone, which I, I know I carry these notes around on my phone because here they are. I found it. It's, it was the one I used when I was not home. I had to make that video lesson as well. But there's some neat stuff in here that I think I wrote down that we'll look at. Okay, there's 610. 8, 9, 10. The main thing you should think about this is that entropy is disorder and chaos. Entropy, disorder, and chaos. Now, there are two big things that can influence whether a chemical reaction is going to occur or not. One is, it has to do with heat. If you add heat to a system or take heat away, that could cause a, it's called a driving force. So, delta H, or enthalpy, is a driving force in a reaction. You know, either if, if you have a lot of heat coming into that calorimeter, into that system, the reaction is going to occur. Or for some chemical reactions, if it's really cold and a lot of heat can go out, then that will be a driving force. But regardless, delta H is a driving force. Another driving force in a chemical reaction is what's called the entropy or the change in entropy, the, 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 the disorder or the chaos of the system. Now, um, I wrote... I was going to show you a few examples. I think I'll just go... Hmm, let me just go through the, the list. Factors that didn't, didn't um, affect entropy. If you look on the next page. Number one says this. And I'm looking at this page, right? Well, I'll say the next page. This page right here. Factors that, inf that affect entropy. Number one is positional probability. Okay. I'll, I'll give you a general easy way thing first. Think about your room right now. Even if you can see the rest of this room where I am, I've got some chemical supplies over here. I've got a lot of papers from many chapters of all the classes I teach. Do you think they're nice, perfectly aligned in a, in a little piles? No, 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 not me. I tried. They started that way, 
But now things are everywhere. I can show you. It's crazy. If I, you know, I got over here, here's some chemicals right here on the, on the wall over here. Here's some glassware right here. Everywhere. Everything's everywhere. Okay. Well, what I'm telling you, there are many, many, many ways that all the things in your, in your room right now can be organized. If you have books, papers, um, clothing, uh, whatever you got in your in your room, you need to have folded in a drawer, hung in a closet. There's a bunch of ways. There's only one perfectly organized way. Everything's perfectly. All the books are alphabetical order. You know, by last name of the author. All the your your clothes are all hanging perfectly. Everything's folded just perfectly in the drawer everywhere. But if you that there are billions of ways that it could be a mess. And you know what's amazing? Things end up going to entropy. Things end up going to disorder. It just it's just hard to keep things ordered, okay? Entropy is disorder. So that is true in the chemistry world, too, that things want to go to be di or not arranged, organized arrangement. Not Okay, so here number one is called positional probability. You don't have to memorize these, but they'll just be, they'll, they'll, you'll see what I mean by them. Okay, it says the number of arrangements in a particular space that yield a specific state. So what I did, I did a little diagram here. Let's just say you had two flasks and they were connected by a tube. All right. Now, let's just say that I have four molecules of helium. Four. Well, I, I, I got a better idea. Let's just have, yeah, let's have um, two. So here's a helium molecule. I'll put a little circle. Well, that's too big, but oh, well, it's okay. You got the idea. H E. And let's just say we had one more helium. Where would you likely expect to find the other helium? And you might be right. Yes, you are correct. Right there. Okay. In this way, it is sort of balanced because of random motion. It's strange. Because of randomness and molecules bumping in each other and moving around, they end up being distributed homogeneously or equally distributed like that. Now, if I were to have the molecules instead both on one side, Maybe I'll just draw a little small version over here of this and put a little thing connecting them. All right. If I were to put them right here, probability, the number one talk about probability, positional probability, state A or state B, which one do you think is more probable, probable, most likely to occur? That one. What is not likely to occur? That one. Okay. That's very strange that all the molecules would just be on one side. Now, of course, if that was closed off, then that would be true, but that's not. It's not closed off. They're free to go back and forth. So um, in order for the molecules to stay this way, this is, like a, this is being organized. There needs to be some kind of force or something that would compel them and, and force them to be over there. They wouldn't be able to... This, would, this is not going to be like the natural thing that would occur. So think about that. Just that little simple bit right there if um, I always tell people the example of in the room where you are right now, what? Well, you can look at the picture. What if all the oxygen molecules in the room just came right here to this side of the room, right to this area right here, and no oxygen was here? So I'm saying I couldn't even breathe it, but here I can breathe. Okay. Well, think about that. So could that happen? Well, it is possible, but not probable. It is possible. As molecules move around, yeah, as they brand a move, at any given moment, they might both be there, okay? But it's not probable. So the same thing is true if I had many molecules. Like, say, if I had, you know, six molecules of helium, well, then you're going to most likely have them equally distributed, three and three, just like that. Okay, now, um, positional probability. That is a driving force in what's called um, the state. Okay, the organization of the system is called its entropy. And here, here you would say it has um, it has higher order. This would have higher order right here. Okay, so the entropy would be very low. High order means low entropy. And think about the word F, letter S being disorder, low disorder. All right, S is disorder or entropy. Entropy and disorder are the same. Think about them being the same thing, okay? So high order means low entropy. Here, it would be low order, and it would be, um, it would be high entropy. 
more disorder. I know it's kind of strange. You would think about that. Well, how can that be more disorder? Well, it, it is. It is strange, but it, they're they're more random. Another word is random for it. So, entropy disorder and more randomness like that. Okay, that would not be random. So, positional probability is one factor. And if if we said that. If we had an oxygen tank, okay, in the room, and we open an oxygen tank right here and let all the oxygen come out, well, then, you know, as it comes out, it's going to be a high amount of O2 here and very low in the rest of the room. And what's going to happen? It's going to, random mo motion, it's going to drive out into the room until finally it's equally distributed all throughout the room. That would be entropy. The entropy will drive it to that, to that state. So that's, a, that's another way to look at it. Um, all right, number two, another, another way we, we always tip this example too, and I always mention it, like um, in a library, say if you went to a library during the summertime and you, like, you, you organized every single book perfectly by category, that whatever Dewey Decimal, by subject, here's your science books, here's your uh, literature, here's your history area, and everything was in alphabetical order, perfectly organized. Okay, it would have zero entropy. Zero entropy, zero disorder, perfect order. Okay, well, if you went in there and just took one book off the shelf and just switched it with one book, even the one right next to it, suddenly you now have entropy. You have you have randomness, or or um, you got away from organization. Okay, now if you switch five books, well, then you have even more, even more, even more, even more. So, um, systems in in uh, in chemistry. Physics, physical processes, chemical processes, they all head to disorder. They all want to go to entropy, to disorder, to chaos. Everything's heading to chaos, okay? It's a way to think about it. All right, number two, changes in phases also affect entropy. This is a very easy one, and I think you can figure this out, uh, even though it's written on your paper. But let's just say the entropy of a solid or a liquid or a gas. So if I'm asking you to compare a solid, liquid, and gas... Where do you think there's more order? Now, order is the opposite of entropy. It, it order, there's order, and then there's chaos. Order and entropy. Okay? Where, where is there more order in a solid, liquid, or gas? And you know, in a solid, this has the, this has, okay, therefore, this would have very low entropy. High order. You know that, um, like all the molecules in a crystal are all perfectly aligned correctly. So that would have very low entropy, low disorder. Liquid would have more entropy, and the gas would have the most entropy, where the molecules are all just floating around everywhere. You can think about a little, a little picture of that where they're all around, and here in the solid state, they're all perfectly positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative in the crystal. Here they're all just scattered. And here the liquid, they're kind of in between, and I say, they're still attracted to each other, but they like this. There's kind of this attractive field between them, but they're able to move freely through all, all around each other. I won't say through, but you know what I mean. Between each other, all around in a liquid, it takes the shape of the container. This has its own organized shape, and that one it takes also the container shape. It fills up the entire container, not just the um, the bottom area. Okay, so. If I have carbon solid or carbon gas, which one would have high entropy? You say, well, carbon gas would have higher entropy. And which would have low entropy would be the solid. Okay. Um, there is a, one of the laws of thermodynamics is that a perfect crystal, if we can exist, would have entropy of zero. That could only occur at zero Kelvin. So at zero Kelvin, absolute zero um, entropy of a solid equals zero. Now, this is actually, um, this is a math concept that we based entropy on. When we, we're, later on, we're going to get to calculations with it. And that math concept is only theoretical. We can't even go down to zero Kelvin. But we say that we assume that at zero Kelvin, everything will be in, in perfect solid um, order, and it would be without any without any chaos. Okay, number three, temperature. Now, would there be, and the reason why you want to know this is because a system wants to go from high organization, it, it, there's a force driving it to entropy, to disorder. There always is. 
like I said, if, I, if all the oxygen molecules are here, there's a force that's going to drive them to come this way to spread out throughout the whole room. All the oxygen's there, it's going to move out. Okay, because of entropy. Um, the same way with, well, okay, here's another example. It says temperature. Let's think about how temperature can work. Um, would you think there's going to be more entropy at a higher temperature or at a lower temperature? It turns out more entropy at a higher temperature. At a higher temperature, there are more ways to arrange molecules. There's one word I forgot to give you. It's called microstate. It could have, I could have given it with given this to you with positional probability. And one way to think about microstate is to say, like, say in a classroom, you have just two seats and you have only one person in the classroom. So what are all the possibilities of where that person can sit? Well, they can sit one or they can sit there, two. There's only two places. If I have four seats, well, then you can say, well, three, four. There's four possibilities. The more seats you get, the more... Um, the more um, the more possibilities there are. Notice that. But then you also can add another person in there. And now I could have A here and B there, A there and B there, A there and B. So now you get all these arrangements. And so microstate, the, the idea is the more possible arrangements you have, that, that's what you want to head to. You want to head to like something that has more possible arrangements. You have more entropy. It's kind of like the weird thing I told you about the spread out of the room. But if there's more places where you can go, you have a higher entropy. When there's less, you have a lower entropy. If you only have two seats, you know, and one person, well, that's very low entropy, okay? But having 18 seats with one person or two people, there'll be a lot more entropy. Well, I just kind of threw that in. That kind of goes with number one. It kind of goes with, with, with one we're going to do in a minute, another one. I realize that. All right, but at a higher temperature, there are more, there's more random motion, so molecules can be arranged in different ways. One way I like to think about it is this. Let's just say I have a temperature like zero degrees Celsius cold, you know, and we have like 500 Kelvins, okay? Remember this thing about the gas laws we talked about, that when the molecules are moving around, like we see here, well, how about this? At a, at a high temperature, they're, they're probably not going to be affected by each other's intermolecular forces. Even though they're positive, negative, positive, negative, it doesn't matter. They can, they can be there. They can bump into each other. They can come right by each other. They're going so fast, they're, they're not really influenced at all by intermolecular forces to, to attract or to repel. But when they're going really slow, you know, they might stick together. Um, in fact, they might st tend, tend to stay more clumped together, and there's certain places that they just can't be. I don't, know, I don't know if the picture did a good job of this, but what I was going to try and tell you, they, stay, they tend to stay more clumped together. So that's going to limit how many different ways to arrange these, how many microstates, how many different places can I arrange them when they're cold versus when they're really hot. When they're really hot, high temperature, moving around fast, any molecule can pretty much be anywhere in just a few seconds. But when they're all clumping together, they're limited. They're not able to be everywhere. So what we're saying is um, this would have high entropy, Higher temperature means higher entropy. Um, I don't put E up. Well, I'll put S. High entropy. And this would have low entropy when you see them at a colder temperature. So colder temperature, low entropy. All right, number four, a change in volume of the system. And this is kind of what I was getting at with a microstate. And I should have brought that up again. But, but, so, but I'll just show you that. And based on the microstate, let's say that this cylinder is two liters. But let's just say we have another cylinder here that is 5 liters, okay? And let's just say I've got four molecules. I've got helium molecule, an oxygen molecule, a carbon dioxide, and what else? I don't know, nitrogen. If I have those four molecules, if I have them there or if I put them over here, where do they have more possible ways to arrange them? More area, more, more area or more volume, obviously there. So here, again, there's a lot more places. Think about it like seats. If you wanted to divide this up into desks in a classroom, areas, places that could be occupied versus this side, well, you have a lot more here. So higher volume means you have a higher entropy, and that's a big deal. So when you increase the volume of a system, in fact, we already know this from the gas law chapter. We know this already, that when you increase the volume, 
then the molecules will well then they'll they'll they're gonna fill that space. They're gonna move around in that volume. They're gonna they're gonna um, uh, how do you say expand into that volume and moving moving around there. That might change the pressure of the system. All kind of stuff can be affected. But because of entropy, because of random motion, they're gonna end up filling it up. There's more possibilities. So high entropy, high volume means high entropy, and lower volume means low entropy. Solutions. This is a very easy one to understand. If you think about solid, liquid, gas, where is the highest entropy? Solid, liquid, or gas? Gas, okay? Well, how about this? What do you think is true? The, the entropy of a solid... Uh, oh, how about this? Entropy of solid aluminum... I'll use aluminum chloride. Or the entropy of solid... Uh, aqueous, I'm sorry. Aqueous aluminum chloride. When it dissolves in water. So obviously, where is there more arrangements, more possible when you're dissolved in water? In fact, the solid might only occupy this volume. But when you dissolve it in water, you know, you can have a giant volume, and all the aluminum chlorides are going to spread out, you know, randomly. But, but from their random, it's kind of interesting, from their random motion, well, Negatives do not want to be near each other. They're going to, that's going to affect a little bit of it. Aluminum chloride, aluminum chloride. But the point is, they're going to have a whole lot more, spread out a whole lot more positioning. Here, their positions are limited to small, like, like even the volume. But here, it will pretty much go in. Whatever the volume of, of the solution is in, it will be, they'll be, they'll be all throughout the entire volume. They'll be, they'll be distributed. So, high entropy for aqueous and then low for solid. Okay, that was number five solutions. The next one says size or complexity of molecules. Now, this is kind of a strange one. I usually like to show this with uh, some organic molecules, and maybe I, maybe I could do that. Um, but I'll just tell you that usually, if a molecule is larger and has more atoms on it, and the bonds can move around, it has more entropy. So we'll kind of get to this in another chapter, but like, for example, let's say you have a carbon and have a hydrogen here and there and there, another carbon and a hydrogen here and there, another carbon, hydrogen there, there, and there. That would be C3H, well, C3H8, propane. That would be propane. Okay, but on the other hand, Instead of that, let's just say that I had two carbons and they were triple bonded together with a hydrogen there and a hydrogen there. Here's the point. This can have a whole lot more positions and way to arrange than that. Now, one thing you wouldn't know about yet until you talk about um, bonding and organic is that these can turn around. These can, this get like a propeller if I built a little one for Actually, I do have one here. I can't believe this. I just have, I have this. I'll just make one that is not perfect here, but I wanted to just show you that in this bond, it is, yeah, we really, theoretically, they really can rotate that way. They really can rotate around. So this might be one way to fit. This won't be another way to fit, and that might be another way to fit. So as you twist these around, you get different shapes and positionings. Well, it turns out that has more entropy. It, there's more, if that's in a space, if I have to pack like a bunch of these in a space or a bunch of these. Well, you know, we would want to be fair and make them about the same mass. So let's just say we have another carbon there, maybe one, two, let's make it double bond, carbon, carbon, another carbon. And I'd have to have some more hydrogens on there, maybe throw a chlorine. You know, I don't know. I have to ex exactly look at that, like, or throw an oxygen on there or something. How about an O and H? So now they're closer, in, their weight, their size is about the same, okay, of these things. But this one's able to twist and turn. In fact, I'm not even able to show you that here. Well, I guess I do. I have another one. I can just kind of make this and bring it out. Oh, boy. Ha! I'm going to make a mess. My little kids were playing with these model sets. We were using them in the last program we did. But notice this. Here's what I meant. Notice I can stretch it this way, or I can put them all closer together like that, or I can put them outward. So there's a whole lot of ways. There's ways that this can, can adapt. That's what I want to think about it. it it's more adaptable. This might have the same weight, the same size as that, but I can fit a lot more of these in the container than, than these because these can, can twist and turn and all that. Higher entropy. Okay, another one would be, oh, the number of electrons in a molecule. 
Having more electrons means you have more entropy. And it just has to, has to do kind of the same way with this, the electrons, how they can be arranged on one side of the atom or molecule or another. Okay. So you would be able to look at, um, at these problems. Here's a few questions you could answer already. And then you know, I think I'm going to have to do a little pause and then show the math in the, in the second video thing. I've got... Thing, I got something that I got to do right here, right now. But I want to tell you about this right now. We'll go over this one bit. So look at this first one, and I'll just talk about these. The, number one, if you have two moles of nitrogen at STP or two moles of N2O gas at STP, which has greater entropy? More, a greater entropy. And, of course, um, uh, by the way, I want to also tell you, I'll bring up positive delta S or positive. That means great entropy. That means low entropy. Or order, high order, low and high order, low disorder, high order, low entropy. Let me just finish these for a few minutes and that'll be all. Okay, so letter A, two moles of N2 or two moles of N2O. N2O would have more entropy. As I said, it has, well, you could say it has a greater, um, more complex molecule, more, more electrons. They're both the same temperature. They're both the same amount of material. Two grams of nitrogen at negative 200. 200, 2 grams of nitrogen liquid at negative 200, gas and liquid. So what has greater entropy? The gas does. That's an easy thing to remember. Remember the gas I just told you. C, 2 grams of nitrogen at negative 100, 2 grams of nitrogen at negative 200. I get the, they're both, they're both going to be gases, it didn't really say, but they're both, both the same. They, they would both be gases or both be solid or both be liquid as long as they match. But at negative 100, negative 200. Well, the one with the higher temperature is more entropy. So that would be negative 100 would be the higher entropy, as we said. D, 2 grams of nitrogen at 50 Celsius and 1.80 or 2 grams at 50 and 1.10 atmosphere. Okay. If you're at 1.80 or 1.10. Now, thinking about a gas in two different um, – it should be – it should have said gas for this one. Think about the gas law chapter. Oh, yeah. Having a high pressure means you have a low volume. Or having a low pressure means you have a high volume. So low pressure, high volume. Or high pressure, low volume. So where is there more entropy? A greater volume. That means a lower pressure. So the one with the lower pressure would be 1.10 atmospheres. That would have higher entropy. Now, the next one just says, will the change in entropy from beginning reactant to product, will it be positive or negative for these? If a solid turns into a gas, did it increase or decrease entropy? Oh, that's what I was writing up there on the board. It will be an increase, positive delta S. You, it, you have more disorder. You went from more order of a solid straight to a gas. By the way, solid straight to a gas is called, is called um, sublimation. And dry ice is solid carbon dioxide, and it goes straight to the other. All right, four are ammonia and oxygen gas give you nitrogen dioxide and water liquid in this case. Okay, that, on a problem like this, what you want to look at is you're going to think about the volume of a system. Like, imagine there's a piston. Now, in thermo, remember, everything has to be at constant pressure. Since it's at constant pressure, we assume that, that um, when gases are produced or, or, um, or gases change from one form to another... That affects the volume of the system because, because the pressure has to stay constant. So if you look at the moles, we have count the moles of gas on the left. 4 plus 7 is 11. 11 moles on the left. On the right, you have only 4 moles of gas. We don't count the liquid. So 11 goes down to 4 moles. You went from a high number of moles, 11, like in the picture, to 4 moles. Okay, so... That tells you the volume will change right according to the number of moles because, because pressure has to be constant. Volume will change. So did it go from it went from 11 to 4. So it went from high disorder to lower disorder. So it went, it will be a negative delta S for that one. In other words, it became more organized, a lower volume. High volume is more entropy, low entropy. Lower volume is low entropy. So a negative change in volume means um, low, lower entropy. Or I'll just say, I could also say a negative delta S. Negative delta V, change in volume is negative delta S. Okay, 
and the, on the opposite. Here's one, K2SO4 solid going to 2K aqueous and sulfate aqueous. Okay, a solid dissolving is going to be positive delta S, more entropy, because it's spread out more. And then here you have two solid, two, two aqueous, lead sulfate, lead aqueous and sulfate aqueous to make lead sulfate solid. That's called a precipitation. They were dissolved, they come together to make a solid. That would be negative delta S, becoming more ordered. You're turning aqueous into a solid. It's more ordered. Okay, so I think you can do almost all the front of the page, and then I'll do the math part in one little section. It'll be pretty short. I'll do the math after this. All right.